What's up guys, Craig here from 509 Bassin and today we're just going to do a quick video of the tournament recap of our club opener on Banks Lake. Um, I got 4th out of 10, to me that's a huge win. A uh, buddy of mine fished that lake 2 weeks ago on another tournament called the Icebreaker and we didn't do so hot. It was a true icebreaker, it was a grind, we stuck it out for 2 days, we only had 2 fish, 1 of each. Um, that kind of shot down all the confidence I had going into this next tournament and many of you guys know when you don't have confidence going to the next tournament it's hard to get motivated it's hard to figure out what you what you want to use you start second guessing yourself um, another key problem I would think or I would say would be the fact that about two days prior to that I lost my bow mounted graph transducer so I didn't get to utilize that um, it really does suck when you rely on it so much and then you don't have it, especially two days prior to the tournament. Um, I just had to kind of get back to how I used to fish when out, without those things, was just follow the contours of the shore. Um, whatever's happened on the shore is most likely gonna trickle down in the water, and I knew I had to figure out a pattern off that. Um, I studied the shore a lot, and I got onto one pattern, and the pattern that it was was in about eight to 10 feet of water on a huge wind-driven uh, point the small mouth were there um, I figured this out about the first fish because I got a couple bites prior to that off the same point so I just figured I would I would throw it out there I'd fish it real quick I would jump to the next point that did that that worked about half the first half of the day for me what I was throwing was the the bait that I used in the tournament prior and I only caught one fish it's from six cents it's called the thud um, this is the craw bomb I match it up with obviously the Trapper Trebles. It's got one obnoxious knock on it. I'm not sure if that's what they're liking. Um, again, the, the grass was about eight feet down and I was just ripping this right off the top. Um, anytime I'd rip it and pause, they were on it. Uh, it worked for me three times, got my three fish probably by noon, then the wind stopped. I knew I had to figure something else out. I Coming into the tournament, I figured the whole time it was gonna be a largemouth tournament there. Um, I knew the water temperatures were getting up. I got into water temperatures at about 48, almost 50 degrees. Um, so I figured the largemouth would start moving. I went to about the only spot in the lake that I knew was just a big road bed and I knew largemouth hung around it and I knew smallmouth were there so I figured I'd get lucky and catch one of them. Um, the two baits I threw on that, um, you won't get to see the fish catches. My battery died on my video camera so you won't see those but I threw just a Texas rigged. Um, this is the Swagger Tungsten flipping weight, um, 3 8 ounce. I didn't have my worm weights. It's paired up with the Trapper Tackle 4 aught worm hook and just the zoom worm on it. Uh, the biggest downfall I had was this is I got lazy and I didn't pair it with the right rod. I paired it with the real short jerk bait rod again because I had no confidence in another bait. And I got lazy. I should have, once I got a few bites on that, I should have switched and paired it up with the right, um, the right equipment and I probably would have landed a lot more fish. Um, next bait I jumped onto was the Six Sense. This is the Crush in the Bluegill Spawn. Again, a solid knock on it. Um, I think that was key. I was grinding it off that, that road bed that was about 10 feet off. As soon as it hit the bigger chunk rock and let it pause, they were on it. Uh, a huge thing that impressed me was on the Swagger Tungsten. This is the Vader series. And again, they claim no chip. Honestly, before I got pro staff with them, I couldn't tell you if that was right or wrong. Um, this is the first time I actually used it on a real, real rocky roadbed. I, I bumped this thing on every rock that was there. The roadbed's a good half mile long, and I drug every inch of this thing. Um, it got stuck in the big chunk rock, it got stuck in the small rock. You pull that off, there's absolutely no chip on it. It impressed me a lot. Um, you can still see the, the stamped weight on it. I'm going to be doing another video on this after this video on just what I could put these things through to see if they would chip. Another thing that kind of caught my attention when I really started paying attention to it was these Ardent rod grips. I like comfort and these things are money. Um, they go over your spinning or your casting rod. Uh, here's the, uh, the 
casting or the spinning there and then I've got the casting installation is pretty simple once you watch the video just get some soap and water um, they remove zero sensitivity from your rod and that's what I like I mean whether you're holding it really tight or just kind of loose I mean we pride ourselves on these hooks that we want the we want the hooks to stay in the fish well we want these rods to stay in the hands and these make it very nice I also pair all my reels with the reel grips um, again comfort and your fingers don't slip off the reel knobs other than that that's kind of like I said you'll probably see the three catches in the and the uh, the way in there but it was a success for me I'm, I'm looking forward to the next next tournaments on my favorite lake definitely be a little bit more prepared for it if you guys have any questions drop them in the comment I'll try to list everything I use in the description and again please like subscribe and share Fishing by myself out here, a little tough. Um, finally found them. Definitely wasn't the technique I was going for, but uh, I got into them. Uh, the biggest key baits for me were a uh, six cent rattle trap and a Texas rig with a trapper tackle um, worm. I'm just gonna pull them out here. I gotta do all the weigh-ins today, so I'm just gonna put them in here and then I'll grab my bag later for you guys to see.